Citigroup posted 34.4 billion shillings profit after tax in the nine months ending September this year. This was a 28% growth over a similar period last year. Releasing the results at the head office in Nairobi, the group managing director and CEO Dr. James Mwangi attributed the improved performance to intentional strategic decisions and quality income mix. Equity registers uh, uh, profit uh, before tax uh, of 44.3 billion shillings, a profit after tax of 34.4 billion shillings, a 28% growth in profit, earnings per share growing at 27% and positioning the shareholders well. In the period, customer deposits grew by 15% to over 1 trillion shillings, making equity the first bank in Eastern Central Africa to cross the milestone. If you take that daily growth rate of 330 million shillings, uh, then uh, the second trillion will appear in less than five years. So we have 21% growth in loans, while well, there's only 1% growth in the government uh, investment. So we have gone back to the market. We want to stimulate the market and we shall see ourselves significantly removing the money that was parked in government stocks to the market. Reallocate 400 billion shillings in government uh, stock and 200 billion in cash into the productive Economy. Dr. Mwangi said the group's post-COVID recovery strategy has proved sound. The 171 billion we had uh, rescheduled under COVID, 50 billion has now been fully paid out of 71. 105 uh, is fully resumed and out of uh, the entire loan book, only 9.5 billion is trained and that is fully provided for. Loans are growing faster than deposits, suggesting we are now growing back from where we had placed money during COVID. In the period, loans grew by 21% to reach 673.9 billion shillings. The group focused on growing non-funded income in a challenging operating environment occasioned by the COVID-19 crisis and the Russia-Ukraine war. An economic turbulence uh, because of inflation, because of uh, the war uh, between uh, Russia and Ukraine that has really affected uh, supply chain of energy, specifically gas, and agricultural output, and as a result, disrupting economic stability in terms of uh, global demand and supply. Non-funded income increased significantly, raising its contribution to total income to 41%. The non-funded um, income, as we can see, grew by that 1%. It grew faster than uh, loan interest income and even gross interest income. We have created new streams of income. This is not a one-off. This is the new norm. Trade finance is the biggest driver of non-fathered income. The bank is of age. It's now sophisticated and complex to use financial tools of trade finance to support the whole region. Why? Because we are fo uh, focused on cross-border trade. A pursuit of regional diversification so subsidiaries enhance their significance. Deposits the subsidiaries are contributing 44%, the loans that is 7%, assets 42, revenue 43. Despite uh, being uh, young now, the subsidiaries are contributing 35% uh, of the profit of the group. Equity BCDC is the fastest growing subsidiary. We are now a systemic institution in the entire region. The number one bank in Kenya, number one bank in DRC, number two bank in Rwanda, and number five bank in Uganda. Equity adopted a strategy to build resilience and agility to handle future shocks. It launched the Africa Recovery and Resilience Plan to stimulate the region's markets and promote trade. The African Recovery and Resilience Plan 
uh, speaks to stimulating the market uh, leading to six uh, sectors it's our new strategy we became resilient can we sell that resilience to the market place so as to catalyze and to orchestrate our transformation with these those sectors and to enable the working capital Digital banking continued to be the largest driver of transaction numbers, with a notable 964 million transactions recorded. We have delivered ease, we have delivered convenience and uh, to the customers, and we can now see how the movement is. So the value of those digital transactions, as we can see, is nearly 7 trillion. And that only compares to 3 trillion of what uh, is on the brick and mortar. The channel of choice of uh, payment is now pay with equity. Dr. Mwangi said equity is celebrated every year as the bank with the lowest charges, making it the bank of choice for over 17.5 million customers. Equity doesn't make money because of high interest rates or high charges. Uh, for 12 years, we have won the award of the bank with the lowest charges in the market. 12 consecutive years. Here is the evidence that interest rate has been lower than where inflation is. And that then confirms the equity model. High volume, low margin. You bring affordability. The CEO highlighted the operations of Equity Group Foundation, which runs several programs, including health, agriculture, education, and energy. Equity, in conjunction with East African Business Council, Minnesota Africans United, Global Minnesota, and Prosper Africa, hosted delegates attending a U.S. trade mission to Tanzania and Kenya. The delegates, representing various institutions in corporate America, engaged with over 500 entrepreneurs through panel discussions, business networking sessions, and site visits to businesses in Dar es Salaam, Zanzibar, Nairobi, and Naivasha. Welcoming the delegates in Dar es Salaam, Equity Group Director, Corporate Banking, Rafael Onyango, said that equity has purpose to champion the recovery of Africa from the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. Equity as a Pan-African bank has purpose to champion the sustainable building of African continent through implementing the Africa Recovery and Resilience Plan which is a social and economic transformation plan that aims to capacitate, connect, and coordinate and finance African economies in order to transform Africa's wealth. Tanzania Private Sector Foundation Director for Policy, Advocacy, Zaki Mbena, said that the interactions are critical for knowledge exchange on the needs of the immediate market and the global trends. Equid Bank, in a very special way, have come out for the first time with an open economic plan for resilience and recovery. Most banks or financial institutions at such moments the traditional way is actually to have under the carpet strategies of sustaining their own businesses and not even sharing what opportunities are. But that has not been the case with equity. An effort is really about where you put your heart and your soul. It's really about, do I really want to create an opportunity for someone here on Earth? And that's one of the reasons why the U.S. government, Tanzanian government have been working together and the equity bank to see how we can advance economic uh, opportunity between the two countries. During panel discussions, various Tanzanian entrepreneurs shared their views on the local business operating environment and opportunities for trade and investment. As American Chamber of Commerce uh, in Tanzania, we really appreciate this uh, delegation coming from U.S. and the efforts of the Equity Bank. Uh, we believe that this will lead to 
uh, more business opportunities and collaboration between uh, both Tanzania, Kenya and US companies. The delegates visited Kigamboni City College of Health and Allied Sciences to learn about training of Tanzania's labor force. Na benki ya equity amekuwa ni mdau muhimu kwetu amekuwa kutupatia financial facility mbalimbali ikiwemo mkopo kufungua account ambazo zinatumika na wafanyakazi na walimu kwao wametusaidia kuweza kujenga jengo la hospitali at Galco and GSM Group near the port of Dar es Salaam, the delegates learned about Tanzania's role as a key logistics and freight service hub given its strategic position Equity is one of our key partners and uh, they've uh, facilitated uh, procurement and facilities that have actually allowed us to grow to this magnitude. But their presence in multiple countries within the region has allowed us to bank easily and move uh, our money whenever we've had to. Tanzania being a developing country, we believe that uh, there's still need of uh, investors to come in. The delegates also paid a visit to Zegereni, the designated industrial area in Kibaha district in the coast region of Tanzania. They toured Kairuki Pharmaceuticals Industry, the first commercial intravenous fluids manufacturing plant in Tanzania. Equity Bank is a regional bank in, in, the, in the East Africa. They have got a lot of clients whom they can get be connected with and start business. I mean, at least you can use that leverage to, to find out who are the big players in those markets. After the sessions in Dar es Salaam, the delegates took a two-hour boat ride to Zanzibar, an island off the East African coast, renowned as a tourism destination. At the official opening of the Zanzibar leg, the Minister of State President Office, Labor, Economic Affairs and Investment, Mudrik Sora, said that Zanzibar was adversely affected by the COVID-19 pandemic, which brought to light the need to diversify to other economic sectors. Our sincerest of gratitude to Equity Bank for continuing to express their interest working together with the government in pursuit of economic prosperity and development and moving our economic agenda for the island. Equity Bank Tanzania Managing Director Isabella Maganga said equity is working with the government of the United Republic of Tanzania to promote the nation as a destination that is ripe for trade and investment opportunities. Equity has purposed to champion the sustainable building of African continent through implementing the African Recovery and Resilience Plan. This plan is a social economic uh, transformation uh, that aims to capacitate, to connect, coordinate, and finance the Africa economic value chain. There are at least two principal areas in which a trade mission like this with equity is useful. One, of course, is the immediate connections that may bring investment or may bring business opportunities where you can meet a potential client or investor. The other is the fact that there is something about being on the ground or talking to experts about a market that tell you what the situation is, be it energy or, or anything else, that you just don't necessarily get from background reading. In panel discussions, various stakeholders discussed investment opportunities and trade opportunities in the island, including the blue economy, real estate, energy, tourism, hospitality, and infrastructure. We have even now improved our facilitation, improved our services in terms of providing permits. Investment certificate can be issued within 24 hours political will is there, the capacity of our people who are dealing with facilitation and service are there. In 1995 we had around 20-25 uh, hotels, tourism hotels. Today, 2022, we have 650 hotels on the island. We were employing around 2,000 people at the time. Today we are employing directly into tourism around 80,000 people. So you can see how tourism is growing. There are a lot of other opportunities on tourism. The delegates visited Fumba Town and a United Petroleum Refinery Depot 
to explore investment opportunities in real estate and in the energy sector respectively. Equid Bank has able to brought a lot of our business uh, our private sector in Tanzania, the business people, and then the connection were great and then uh, we added a lot of information. They provided us the resources that we need so that we can bring the tourists to this beautiful country of Tanzania and the island of Zanzibar. Tanzania is set to be, to be positioned in the global economy. The trade mission in Tanzania is among the many initiatives that Equity Group, through its regional banking subsidiaries in six countries, has put in place to accelerate the implementation of the Africa Recovery and Resilience Plan. The aim is to champion the sustainable building back of the African continent post the COVID-19 pandemic. A delegation of entrepreneurs from the U.S. arrived in Nairobi on the second leg of a trade mission in mainland Tanzania, Zanzibar, and Kenya. The fact-finding mission in Kenya started with introductions to local entrepreneurs at a meeting held at Equity Center, the Equity Group head office. The principal secretary in the State Department for East Africa Community, Kevit Desai, said intra-Africa trade stands at a mere 12%. Desai lauded equity for organizing the U.S. trade mission to Kenya and Tanzania and an earlier trade mission to the Democratic Republic of Congo. What the East African community has with respect to all this is a very great opportunity. On one hand, we're looking at 300 million worth of consumers, which has enormous potential. Cameroonian ambassador to Kenya, Vivian Kumar, acknowledged equity for its community-based approach to business and encouraged the delegates to also visit her country. Africa is a business field and whoever has products can market them in Africa. And Cameroon is one of those countries you can't do business without entering Cameroon. We have a very strong uh, introduction of SMEs in Cameroon right now and those SMEs need funding. And please be reminded that Cameroon is an open market looking for investors. The senior commercial officer at the U.S. Embassy in Nairobi, Joshua Startup, highlighted Kenya's advantaged position as an investment destination. Kenya is the hub for uh, many U.S. multinationals in East Africa. It's got a great um, economy. It's the third largest economy in Sub-Saharan Africa with 52 million people and uh, 87 percent English-speaking population has a GDP of 108 billion in 2021 with an average growth rate of 5 percent year over year. It's the financial, commercial, logistical and ICT hub for East Africa. When I moved to U.S., I had built my house here, but I realized finding affordable housing as a new immigrant in U.S. was really hard to find. So I found my way working with the city government to provide affordable housing. We are looking at the woman that's in the rural areas back in my village. Um, how often do they get to go to the hospital to get checked just um, for their breasts or their pap smear? Most of them don't because they don't have access. Back in Minneapolis, I work with African-born women to give them access to health care. So that's something that I want to bring back to here. Addressing more than 500 delegates attending the mission on day two, Equity Bank Kenya Managing Director Gerald Waroy said the bank is committed to supporting customers during moments marked by volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. When you are not leading as a bank, you are missing something because by leading to our customers, one, you are impacting on lives and livelihoods of the people. So we believe that money we have invested in the government securities, it's available for you so that uh, we fund your dreams, we fund your aspirations, and we actually uh, grow together. 
The retail infrastructure has really developed, let's just say thanks to COVID, we've become increasingly digital. Anyone who's looking to sell their products in this region can do it and you can reach all corners of the country and all corners of the region. The entrepreneurs attended plenary sessions, panel discussions and business interactions on one-on-one -on -one engagements. With Equity Bank, we are working with their subsidiaries in uh, Uganda, DRC, Tanzania, I think South Sudan. What we envision with this partnership is where we can allow people in the rural areas, in the different markets, and especially DRC, to be able to um, supply them with solar home systems that can allow them to have access to energy and be able to actually charge their phones. Kenya is already a tourist destination for patients for 14 African countries. So, yes, many Kenyans, many Nigerians, many Ghanaians, many Tanzanians, are going towards India, but that is really the high specialized ones. There are many Africans, 14 countries, that are already heading to Kenya. The consumer must be able to still afford nutritious food, and how do we make sure that we can be able to do that? So it's also investment in our post-harvest loss management, making sure that we have um, uh, cold chain, especially in, in our more perishable goods, and not just for the large producers, also for small scale. In this country, as much as um, education is a government-run affair, the private schools have taken a center stage. Um, for example, here in Nairobi, I want to say that uh, we have more private schools than the government schools in certain areas, especially even in the primary education. So what we do is uh, core and complement the education that the government gives instead of trying to compete with the government. The mission included visits to selected institutions in Nairobi and Naivasha. The delegates visited Equity Afia Kangemi Medical Center before heading to Kenya Railways where they took a ride on the Nairobi Commuter Rail Train village and back. Kenya Railways and the Nairobi Commuter Service is, uh, can actually be uh, like the, a pilot uh, uh, project where we work with those investors uh, to unlock the potential of commuting in uh, up and, an up and center like Nairobi. Uh, we are trying to look at w what are the opportunities that are right here for energy sectors in the United States of America, partic particularly trying to see how we could bring new form of kinetic energy to Kenya, to African government, to African countries in order to add value and transform our energy sector to use, to be able to use clean uh, energy. Later, the delegates drove to the Rift Valley to tour the Olkaria Geothermal Plant in Naivasha. This is the largest geothermal plant in Africa with a capacity to generate 158 megawatts of electricity. Drive to PPP partnership will really help Kenjen to accelerate uh, availing electrical energy to the nation by providing additional financing. The geothermal is not something that a lot of us normally encounter in their work because there are certain limited areas where geothermal is easily and economically accessible around the earth. I want to personally thank Equity both on, on my part and on behalf of the industry because they have done a very, very good job of introducing us to a broad range of companies both in the energy field and beyond and introducing us to the regulatory arena in which those companies play. Vertical Agro EPZ, the CEO, Hasit Shah, said the vegetable processing plant is the largest exporter of frozen avocados in Africa and the only one that exports the product to China. The North American market, the US, one of the richest markets in the world, the second biggest after China. It's a very interesting market, but we are quite far away. So initially we're looking for investors to come in to understand what we do and then to see how we can identify what market opportunities there are for us to sell into the U.S., what products they need, and then scale that up from here and then deliver into the U.S. in the years to come. The trade mission organized by Equity and Partners is among the many tools the bank is using to accelerate the implementation of the Africa Recovery and Resilience Plan. The plan aims to impact 100 million people on the African continent through its financial and social impact initiatives.
my name is John Tindi. I'm uh, in agribusiness. I own an agrovet and I also do rice production and horticulture production as a way of living. In horticulture I do pepper, I do eggplants, I do vegetables, both uh, African and uh, exotic. I also have a tractor. I do plowing for myself and to other people as well as also an alternative source of income. My tractor does uh, plowing, rotavating, it also does uh, trailing, it uh, pulls a trailer that carries a mizigo, it also pulls a water bowser that is used to uh, supply construction sites and various uh, events. I started in uh, 2016 with my uh, kitchen garden and then uh, I grew to one acre and then I started doing three acres of rice uh, to supplement the horticulture. Now I'm um, at over 10 acres of rice and over three acres of horticulture. I also have a small orchard. It has uh, bananas, it has sour soap, it has popo, it has uh, citrus fruits, it has lemon, it has uh, oranges. There are so many challenges we face, especially as youths in agribusiness. The key among them being financing. It's not easy to get a lender who can support your dreams as a youth in agribusiness. That hinders our growth because we can't access uh, sufficient financing to finance our ventures. We also have a challenge uh, during the COVID times. We find that it affected our business so much. There was little liquidity in the market, so we had stock, but it couldn't translate to cash, puts us in a very bad situation. Every market has competition, and especially the market that I'm in I was the latest entrant. I found it very difficult at the beginning to, to succeed where the big boys had already entered. But uh, over the years I've managed to know how to do it, and now things are going well. When I was venturing, uh, I found a lot of youth who had nothing to do. They were basically jobless and uh, were just loitering around. So I took them and uh, we started uh, having small farms for each of them. And right now they are also growing as I grow. They have farms as well that they are using uh, to get a source of income. Equity has been a very important partner because initially when I was looking for financing to grow, I visited various uh, financial institutions, but uh, they could not offer me exactly what I wanted. So when I went to Equity and I talked to them, then I realized they could be able to support me through the journey. And uh, the first loan I took with Equity was of 100,000 shillings and uh, I paid it back after six months. Then I went for another loan of 400,000 shillings and I also paid it back after one year. The recently I took an asset financing loan of 1.9 million with equity and I've done eight months. So far things are going on well. Equity Group Foundation took me through financial literacy training. So initially I was just doing business without keeping records. And so I could not know my exact position as a businessman, if I'm making profit or not. So after that training, I started keeping my records and I started uh, interacting with customers at a personal level. It has improved how I sell and it has made me realize uh, that indeed my venture is profitable. But that training has helped me to know uh, my key strengths where I can be able to sell and I capitalize on them when the business is not doing very well. That has uh, made me rise above my competitors because I know where my strength lies and so I put more effort on where my strengths are. Initially, I had uh, only one employee. I employed directly and uh, three others employed indirectly. But now I have five employees directly and uh, over 10 of them indirectly. I can tell uh, my fellow youths that agriculture is a full-time employment just like other sources of employment. 
and the goodness with the agribusiness is that uh, there's not so much pressure as in other sources of employment. You can be your own boss, you can employ as many people as you want and you can grow in as much as you make efforts to grow. Everybody can do agriculture even if you didn't study it. It is an area that welcomes everybody so long as you have the willingness to do it there is always something you can do to change the situation in the country. My word of encouragement to the youth who are looking for employment is that don't look for employment. Employment is just next to you. You can start by growing uh, vegetables like I started with a kitchen garden and you grow gradually because the market for uh, food is everywhere. It starts with you. Every day you are able to have three meals a day and that means you pay money to eat. So there is uh, vast opportunities in the agricultural sector. Please venture into agriculture because uh, it can change uh, the economy and it can change how we do things. Majina ni Nelson Rakwa, mimi ni mkazi wa eneo hili la Kimelo. Hapa sasa hii ni senda yetu, so bado ijakuwa. Nimezaliwa hapa, nikalelewa hapa. Kutoka hapa unafoka moto mbili ndio ufike mahali sisi tulianza masomo. Kuko na shule hapa. Nikamaliza nikaenda secondary, nikamaliza nikakuja nyumbani siku kaa nyumbani nikaenda college nikafanya health records and information management nikamaliza 2018 nikaenda attachment up my teaching and referral nikamaliza attachment nikafollow ndia ndio nilikuwa naona kama ndapata job but unfortunately bahati ya ikuwa yangu sasa baada ya kukuja nyumbani 2018 ndio sasa maisha ilikaa ngumu kidogo umepitwa pitwa mavijana wala wakoenda shule wamenua maboda wengine wamenua makondo zao wanachunga chunga sasa hiyo challenge kanipa nifikirie ju sasa mimi niko na makaratasi na sina income nikaanza ka biashara nikaanza kununua nunua tu makaa huu tu nikapeleka senda niuze nipate ka kitu 2019 nadhani 2019 2018 serikali kakuja kuban story na makaa nikaona wacha ni tafute alternative Nikaanza biashara ingine sasa 2018 Nikawa nanunua kondo na peleka soko ndulele Sasa hapo ndio ilikuwa biashara yangu smart kabisa kwa yote nimewaifanya Ju sasa hiyo ilikuwa inani inaniingizia pesa Ile challenge kidogo nilipata hapo nilikuwa napata pesa lakini sijui kwa manage Hiyo biashara yangu ikakuja ikasoroteka niliingia ukulima kalima ngano ya ka nane na mahindi ya ka nne na maragwe ya ka tatu hapo ndio mwanguko ilianza kuna ukame ilikuja 2019 so nilipanda ngano akukunyesha poa mpaka ikamalizwa na wadudu ikaisha hivyo baada ya kufanya corona ikakuja ikatupiga masoko ilifungwa sasa hapo ndio nilipata ka idea ya duka Tulikuwa na changamoto juu kuanzia huku kwete mpaka mahali senda iko hakuna posho mil. Sasa by then tulikuwa na kikundi. Tukaanza ku, kusomeshwa unaweza pata pesa kwa benki. Unaweza pata mkopo yenye itakusaidia bora unajua kulipa ama unajitakamua kulipa. So kulikuwa na walimu walikuwa wanatutembelea. Walikuwa wametoka Equity hii branch yetu ya Narok. Wakaanza kutufundisha venye unaweka biashara vitu kama records kwa biashara, vitu kama ku advertise biashara yako kwa simu kubwa kubwa, vitu kama venye una separate pesa yako ujue hii ni profit nikajaza na mimi mkopo. Nikasema mimi sitaki pesa nataka mnununulie posho mimi. Sasa maisha imekuwa sawa kwa sababu hata sifikirii tena kutafuta ajira kwa sababu tayari nishajiajiri na ninaingiza kitu kupitia equity hizo ma trainings mimi mwenyewe nimesaidika 
kwa sababu si kuwa naweka records zote za biashara si kuwa najua kitu kama limit juu walitufunza kama madeni iko na limit kila customer kuna limit yake na sasa saving atu saa hii mimi si save ndio nipewe pesa na save kwa sababu ya maisha yangu ya kesho hakuna kitu mbaya kama mtu kukaa bila kitu yake so jambo la kwanza nataka nikuwe na kitu yangu kwamba sitegemei mtu anipe ni nataka nikuwe mimi ndio nategemea niwapee watu Nikipenda kuhimiza vijana wenzangu sana sana wa ile community nimetoka ya Wamasai. Hakuna kitu ambacho akiwezekani. Kuna vikundi ambavyo ina mafunzo kama vikundi vya Equity. Nikipenda kuhimiza tujiunge na vikundi vya Equity kwa sababu inasaidia. Mimi mahali nimefika ni Equity imenisaidia. Na bado niko na maono watanisaidia. Kwa hivyo wakiingia vikundi vya Equity watasaidika kama mimi nimesaidika pia nao wanaweza wakasaidika The 2023 Wings to Fly Scholarships cohort has been selected. The 1000 students were identified after a thorough process that ensured only the bright and most needy scholars who sat the Kenya Certificate of Primary Education exams in 2022 were admitted to the program. The Wings to Fly Scholarship program is a partnership between Equity Group Foundation and Equity Bank with additional financial support by the German government through KFW, Mastercard Foundation, USAID, UK Aid, private institutions and individuals. At independence, we said we had the three enemies. Ignorance, poverty and disease. That's what uh, this foundation is all about. Look at the education. Equity has devoted itself to solve this problem to the best of its ability. But it's not solving this problem, but creating leaders who it can partner with in the future to solve this problem. The initiative to support disadvantaged students pursue education is geared towards positively transforming their lives and their families, but more fundamentally, developing the next generation of transformative leaders. The poverty index peer wenye wako chini kulingana na makaratasi yale ambayo muliandika tuliyapitia zote. The scholarship selection process started with public announcements throughout the whole country through religious organizations, local and national radio stations, social media and local administrators. The applicants after shortlisting were then invited for interviews at appointed locations where scholars and their guardians first met the community scholarship selection board CSSB members. Kasi tunafanya hapa ni kazi ya haki na kazi ya ukweli. Hakuna upendeleo. Bank manager hana anything to do with influencing. These forms are very available. You go to the bank you find them free of charge. You go to the equity agency you find them there. It is almost a 3 km hike up Marini Hill where Michael Kemei and his grandmother Chetanit Paulo are about to receive guests. Members of the West Pokot CSSB have paid them a visit after a successful interview to secure a slot in the 2023 Wings to Fly scholarship. I used to live with my father when my second mother came. It started by 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 not wondering me. So I I I came to sit to live with my grandmother. I scored 352. The family has only one hat that they call home. My grandmother Sylvia and me I will go to look for a place to sleep. There was a time my friends refused to open the door for me to sleep there and I was forced to to sleep outside. I sleep in the bushes. Chatanit or Goko has not been down this hill in 5 years. A snake bite that has since healed almost took her life. A clerical error of her date of birth on her national identity card renders her too young to access cash transfers for the aged. The stories we get from these learners, they move us and we give them per merit. 
some of those students who are left out, personally I've taken two of them and I'm assisting them in their schooling. Mitchell Madoni hails from Matongo village, Muranga. The 14-year-old lives with her single mother who aches a living from mining sand. Mitchell has never known her father as her parents parted ways when she was still a toddler. Her mother later moved into Mitchell's great-grandmother's home. The main challenge was school fees. Since my mom sometimes couldn't get a job, so I had to be, get out of school and come back home, wait until she gets some school fees, then I can go back to school. Mitchell attended Matongo Primary School, where she sat her KCPE exams to score 416 marks, emerging the third best student in Moranga County. I need the wings to fly scholarships because I really need to achieve my dreams and also in my studies. And I would also like to help my mom to get out of from this poverty. It doesn't mean that you are poor, that you can't achieve your dream. This is Kakuma, a small northern Kenya town in Turkana County. It is in this area that the sprawling Kakuma refugee camp is located. This camp has been home to Adut Manyok from South Sudan. Adut's aunt fled to Kenya when civil war broke out in her home country in 2013. She tagged along her children and her brother's children, including Adut and her five siblings. Someone who was a family friend told us that if we could move from that place without being killed, then we could be helped being brought to the camp. The family settled in the camp that supports refugees from different countries. I started schooling in 2015. I was poor in education, but my friends and neighbors have been telling me that school is good. So I started going with them to school. Together we came home in the evening. Then if there is no food, then we still gather around all of us and then we study to read. I was able to go to school. 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 Party Island is a secluded island nestled 25 kilometers east of the bustling Lamu town. It is here, amidst the tranquil waters and sandy beaches, that the Community Scholarship Selection Board members sitting in Lamu set sail to find Isa Faisal's home. The 14-year-old boy has faced unimaginable challenges in life. Abandoned by his father at infancy, Isa and his siblings have had to navigate through life supported by the single mother. I Going to fly, tayari, imsha leta magadiliko. Na tutarajia magadiliko makubwa zaidi. Tarajia ni pati kazi ya utakitari. To Julius Chacha from Igori County, his border town of Isibanya reminds him of his father's escape leaving him to the care of a mother with no livelihood. The abandonment remains a puzzle to the 16-year-old boy who scored 429 marks in KCP exams to emerge the second top candidate in Kenya. Julius chose Alliance High School and adopted prayer, hard work and discipline as drivers to get there. My mentor is a big person. I read his book that is Think Big, and because of that, he, he aspired to me. He made me know that all those people who become great people must have a painful story to tell, and every painful story has an ending. I aspire them uh, to work as a doctor, and I know that Wings to Fly, from its name Wings to Fly, I will fly. Church's mother is a vendor in Isibania and is sheltered by a well-wisher. When the CSSB sitting in Megori made the home visit, they confirmed the high-performing scholar is needy.
Ladies and gentlemen, um, we are here to witness the completion of uh, equity bank and spire bank uh, transaction. And before we go too far, kindly allow me to invite uh, Bishop uh, Kariuki to open for us with a word of prayer. Bishop. Thank you, Alex, and uh, a very good afternoon. Shall we pray? Oh, Heavenly Father, we want to thank you this moment of the day. We thank you for the opportunity that you have given us for us to be alive. And also we want to thank you that we are gathered here as we see the completion of a transaction. We want to thank you as we commit this meeting unto your able hands. Let your presence be with us, your blessings, and we thank you for we call it blessed in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Bishop. Um, we also want to inform you that we are live and you can follow us on um, our group website, on Zoom, and if you are um, going to share and tweet, kindly use the hashtag um, equity uh, supporting teachers. Hashtag equity uh, supporting teachers. Kindly allow me at this uh, particular point to invite uh, our group executive director, uh, Meili, to make um, her opening remarks and then invite uh, the chair, Spire Bank, Meili. Good afternoon all and welcome. Thank you so much for joining us uh, this midday, first day of February 2023. We are indeed very grateful uh, that uh, you were able to make time uh, to join us. So may I first of all start by saying that um, we are very delighted that um, after just about one, one year, uh, completed this uh, transaction last night. Um, it was a very unique kind of transaction. I'm sure you know that equity is known for doing very unique transactions. Uh, so this was also a unique one where we acquired certain assets and liabilities of Spire Bank, um, mostly the deposit, uh, the deposit accounts and the loan accounts. 20,000, over 20,000 um, deposit accounts, uh, customers, and also 3,700 plus uh, loan accounts. Those customers are now on our platform. Uh, from midnight last night, the 31st of January, 2023. Now, I would just like to start by saying that we really appreciate all the teams that have worked to make this transaction a reality. We had several um, teams um, from different institutions that are represented here today. And uh, if you don't mind kindly, I would like the various teams to just stand up uh, once I mention you uh, so that we can recognize you and really thank you for the support that you have given us to see us through to completion. The first team was um, the team from Mualimu National Circle, uh, led by their chair, uh, Mr. Joel, uh, who is sitting right here. So the team from Mualimu National Circle uh, kindly stand for recognition, also led by Ken, the MD. Thank you so much. They did a very good job. Uh, a lot of cooperation and getting things uh, moving around uh, throughout. Thank you so much, team. We had a team from Spire Bank, 
led by our chairman, William Rahedi, and Brian Kilonzo, who is the CEO, the managing director. Uh, kindly, thank you so much for your contribution. We also had the transaction advisors. The first the team is the NCBA team, led by Kathure Nyamo and Morris. Uh, if you're here, thank you. Thank you so much for the support in guiding us through the transaction. We also had the Stan Big Investment Bank, led by Deepa and Yokavi. If you're here, kindly. Yeah, thank you, Deepa, and your team also for leading us jointly with um, NCBA. We had the legal advisors, Mose and Mose, led by Simon. Simon. Yeah, thank you, Simon and your team uh, for your contribution and guiding us through the legal process. Supported also by the equity transaction legal advisors, uh, ALN, uh, led by Rosa, Duarte, Motero, and uh, Kevin. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, Kevin. Now, we also had um, the escrow agent, Kaplan and Stratton, uh, led by Ruth. Ruth, if you made it, I know we gave you very short notice. Um, yeah, so Kaplan and Stratton are the escrow agents for purposes of handling the funds in the transaction. We also had uh, a large team from Equity Bank, Equity Group. So Equity Team, wherever you are, uh, we were supported by Christine Ligo, we had an operations team led by Godfrey, a legal team led by Eric, and a customer service. The customer service team is now on standby to ensure that, uh, led by Sima there, and, uh, and uh, Lois, Elizabeth on the credit side, just to ensure that the customers that we have uh, onboarded onto Equity Family today, tonight, last night, Miringo on the transaction, they will have a seamless transition and they are going to be able to get their transactions through without any specific uh, issues. Gerard is the MD uh, for Kenya and uh, he has been guiding the team through the preparations for the takeover. So that is done and I am very happy to note that the message I got from Merengo this morning is that already we have transacted over almost 8 million. We have processed over 8 million checks from those customers, Brian. Brian yesterday called me in the evening and he was very worried. He was asking me, Mary, now what, our customers, are they okay? And I assured him, your customers are okay with us. So almost 8 million already transacted. More than uh, 20 customers have already accessed our branches as at 10 a.m. today, seamlessly, with no issues. So anyone out there with a transaction, kindly visit any location of equity, and you're going to be assisted uh, to, to do that. Thank you, the equity team, for, for that. Um, we also have the board of equity present, uh, led by our chairman, uh, Ambassador, kindly, Ambassador Erastas Muencha, Thank you so much for giving us the approval uh, to proceed with the transaction. Uh, the board members, kindly. <laughs> I know we have a few around. We had a board meeting earlier, uh, so some of them could not make it. They had other arrangements. But we have uh, Professor Gideon, uh, Professor Waema, and yeah, I think the others had to go. So thank you so much for joining us for the event. And thank you for the approvals and guiding us through the transaction. Um, yeah, I think those who are the parties uh, involved, I don't know whether there's anyone I've failed to recognize. We must also recognize the support that we have received from our various regulators who have given us uh, the various approvals in different stages. We want to thank also the, the, the shareholders of the various institutions. They gave us the approvals, uh, Mualimu shareholders, Mualimu board, they had to give the approval. We got um, our, our shareholders at equity to approve. 
and we also got our regulators. Um, the Central Bank of Kenya has supported us through this transaction, and finally they gave us the approval last Friday. We got an approval from our CS for the National Treasury and Planning also last uh, Thursday. We are very grateful, and uh, the notice was published on Friday uh, for execution yesterday. So we are very grateful uh, also to the commission, uh, the, com the competition authority uh, for allowing the transaction and the various other regulators who looked at the various uh, approvals uh, required, including also the SACOS uh, regulators. So we are very grateful for that. I think we cannot only say that, um, and we'll leave the chairpersons to uh, just say a few more words, but on my side, I would like to say that um, equity, we are led by a vision. We have a vision, very st a strong focus, and it's a vision of transformation. So for us, uh, all we are looking to do, every activity that you see coming from us, is because we have seen an opportunity to continue with our mission and a vision of empowering lives and transformation of lives and livelihoods. And we are looking at that vision, not just in the context of Kenya, but in the context of the region and in the context of the whole continent. And in the mo at the moment, we are also seeing the impact stretching even beyond the reaches of the boundaries of our continent. The impact is massive. So for us, we are very excited today because we are saying we have 20,000 plus and 3,700 plus who have come under our wings. And we are going to figure out what are the opportunities they are looking at and what is it that we can do to develop solutions that work for the customers that we have taken over today. And we are also hoping that that is just the beginning of building a very, very strong and collaborative relationship with all the parties involved. So for me, I can only say that we are really looking forward. Also remember that we have operations in six countries within the region, including Uganda, South Sudan, uh, Tanzania, uh, DRC, and uh, Rwanda. So any of those customers who have ambitions out there, expanding their businesses, or looking at other opportunities uh, for growing businesses, uh, startups, or services, goods, uh, distribution, please feel free to talk to us because we are developing the solutions and our African uh, Recovery and Resilience Plan. We have a plan for you. So feel free to talk to us and then we will figure out what we can do together. So without uh, further ado, uh, I would like now to take um, the opportunity, it is my pleasure now, to welcome the chairman of Spire Bank, Mr. William Rahedi, to make a few remarks. Thank you. Karibu, Mr. William. Yeah. Thank you Good afternoon. Um, many of you may, may have heard of a bank called the Bullion Bank and Southern Credit and Equatorial Finance. Now, all those banks come together at some point and they end up here as Spire Bank. So over the years, the industry has had occasions to move together to make the industry more smoother in managing the public money. And this is one of those situations where Equity Bank has stepped up to help Spire Bank finish well in a project it started uh, with, a, uh, with a, one major shareholder, Mwalimu. It has not been an easy work because Mwalimu had plans to do great things with Spire Bank. So we are very grateful that uh, Equity opened their doors and took us home and we are going to be part of equity into the future. We're not saying Spy Bank is dead, but it's become part of equity. So we are going to move together in this. 
And in getting to this point, I must express gratitude to quite a number of people that allowed it to happen. First, the directors of uh, Spirebank struggled over many years to reach a decision on how to go forward with this. There were many threatening consequences of making a decision to liquidate the bank. And many of us hesitated and had doubts about this being a very viable direction to go. There are many consequences if you talk to the lawyers in the House for the action we took that if it not, was not well supported in structure, it would fail and the consequence would be directly to the directors. So if you're a director of Spire Bank, I applaud you for moving forward and making the decision to go for this liquidation arrangement. And also we, we had very personalized services with a lot of our creditors. And our staff almost daily had a very personal discussion with, credit, with uh, depositors who wanted to withdraw their monies and go to different banks so that we could hold on and keep moving forward. And those discussions were not always easy to do. So we always had to end up postponing their expectations or give him the hope that we shall get a solution very soon. It has taken us this far to get here. And in that process, some of the solutions we got were because of our shareholder. So Mwalimu, we thank you for allowing us to exist to this point and to work with our depositors until this point, because you gave a lot of your resources, which were supposed to be applied to your members for their different projects but you supported the bank in doing that, so we thank you for that. And we also just thank the staff of Spire Bank for walking a tightrope and sticking with Spire Bank because they had talked to customers and assured them things were all right. So they also st stuck with us so that they could see the action through. So thank you, members of Spire Bank, for being very professional and consistent in trying to make the spy bank keep moving until this point in time. So thank you for that. And also just the industry itself and the pressures that we faced, we have to show gratitude to those banks that uh, supported us in giving us uh, overnight and even finally Mwalimu for giving money and also for the central bank for supporting that. There are many pressure points of uh, notices of cease and desist from doing this. We could have woken up one morning and found padlocks around our doors because we had those challenges. But equity came along and helped us finish well, allowed us to finish in a dignified way, to send off our staff in a way that is uh, set out in law in agreements with them so that they're getting packages that will sort them out and allow them to start new projects with their lives without them being um, suffering the indignity of their offices being shut. But they have worked with us to get to this point and shut the, the offices in a dignified manner. So thank you, Equity, for stepping up and supporting us in getting to this point. What I would say is that also Equity has promised or suggested ways forward that Mwalimu and its investment can work forward with where SPA is right now. So that if there are any lines of credit or arrangements of financing that Mwalimu may need, equity should be their bank of choice. They have opened that door and I'm sure Mwalimu will be able to take it up. And also for the staff of, uh, of SPA Bank, I think you have uh, a reputation that equity has seen, the way you have worked, the long hours you have kept together. You have built great friendships with the people who have assisted. And I'm sure that will count for something as you move forward in your next projects. So for me, it's just to thank the transitional advisors, and especially the lawyers that came to sit with us on the board and told us the consequences of where we are going and what the deal was. It was a tough deal, it was not easy to make, but they helped us reach decisions that we have made right now. So as we go forward, 
I would just say thank you to all the parties involved, uh, especially the final party equity and the way they have handled us. They have not um, looked as, at us as un, unworthy, but they have treated us with respect. So thank you, Equity, for handling Spire Bank in its troubled times with a lot of respect and a lot of dignity. And also the parties or the advisors, you came to talk to us. You did not uh, lay, lay blame and scorn on us, but you appreciated where we had come from and the challenges we faced. And you suggested to us a way forward, and here we are. So thank you very much. And I may say, may God bless all of you for allowing us to leave Spire Bank. There are some work to be done in the coming months to finish all that is outstanding, the loose ends, but you have allowed us to live with dignity. I don't think there's a transaction like this that has happened in the market yet, but it has allowed us to set an example for what is possible in the money market in Kenya, where we work together to make it more stable and reliable. So thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I will now invite um, the national chairman, Mwalimu National Sako, Mr. Joel Gashali, to make his remarks. Karibu, Mr. Gashali. Thank you, Master of Ceremony. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon. Uh, allow me to take this opportunity to thank you for creating time uh, to come and celebrate with us uh, this uh, uh, moment. Uh, we don't take it for granted. I know this is a journey that uh, we started quite a number of years, uh, around four years ago. But uh, today we want to celebrate and say uh, we have come to the end uh, of uh, this journey. Uh, allow me to make a few remarks uh, before uh, uh, we can be able to conclude. I want to state that uh, uh, this is a uh, transaction uh, structured as an asset and liability purchase uh, agreement, uh, quite unique because uh, equity will be acquiring uh, one of our subsidiary uh, assets and liabilities in form of uh, the 20,000 depositors as well as the 3,700 3, uh, loan customers. Uh, this, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is going to create, uh, uh, is expected to strengthen uh, the two institutions, Equity Bank and Moli Musako, uh, to leverage in their respective uh, well-established domestic, uh, regional, corporate, and public uh, sector. The transaction encourages uh, encouraged by our regulator, that is CBK and SASRA, provides confidence of consolidation in the banking sector uh, in order to create uh, bigger and more resilient institutions that can weather shocks in this business environment uh, that creates stability. I remember when uh, the CBK governor uh, gazetted uh, this transaction, uh, he did this by saying, that uh, uh, this transaction is to create uh, a good uh, and harmonious financial sector, whereby uh, as equity acquires Spire Bank, which has been struggling, uh, the customers and the, and the customers of the bank can be uh, banked by one of the largest institutions uh, in Africa. This transaction strengthens operational efficiency of the SACO that is aligned to regulatory best practice uh, through cutting down future losses in our institution, Molimu National Circle. It puts to an end the considerable losses which have deprived uh, the circle of capital, which will be deployed to provide enhanced credit to our members at competitive uh, prices. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have been able to provide support to the bank uh, since acquisition in 2014. And uh, we have uh, ensured that the bank remains afloat. 
However, what we wanted to achieve as an organization to grow the wealth of our members, we've not been able to do so. However, with this partnership with Equity, we know that our members are going to benefit in uh, future collaborations whereby they are going to achieve uh, their, their goal of uh, uh, creating wealth on their uh, assets. This diversification ensures sustainability of m uh, &S in the long run through elimination of operational and inherent risk, as well as huge operating costs as the circle seeks to uh, uh, create new opportunities and gain strategic benefits by extending our, uh, our customer base. This transaction is lucrative and attractive opportunity for the circle to free off its finances or capital to strengthen its uh, technological base and uh, concentrate in its newly launched products. Uh, these products are the affordable mortgage loans, the asset and uh, insurance premium financing, which will improve the standards of our members and also increase the value of our institution. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, this transaction presents an effective strategic direction for the circle to achieve new revenue streams that improve organization bottom line profitability, thus increase returns to our members. Our members have been calling uh, for the institution uh, to diversify from uh, this investment that uh, we had uh, uh, put in uh, for the institution. And uh, today, I know they are happy because uh, moving forward, we are going to ensure that we put uh, the organization finances uh, into proper use. And as they generate revenue to the institution, our members are going to be happy as they are going to get uh, better returns in future. As we walked through these regulatory requirements, there were several setbacks uh, because uh, uh, court cases uh, were put in and also negative publicity, which was aimed at uh, forestalling this exercise. However, I want to state that uh, today uh, we have been able to weather all these storms and we have completed the process as it was done yesterday. So we want to thank each and every person that has been able to participate in this process, has uh, walked the journey with us uh, up to this completion. We want to thank you, uh, our partners, Equity, for allowing uh, our customers to be part of uh, this big institution. And I know uh, the organization Equity is not going to let them down. Allow me to appreciate uh, a few of the individuals who we worked with at uh, Molimu Sako and its subsidiaries. Uh, one uh, is the board of directors, uh, as well as uh, the CEO of Molimu. Uh, this is a journey that we have worked for the last uh, four years, uh, even with the new directors. I know uh, they have been instrumental to ensure that we are able to complete uh, this transaction. At uh, Molimu Sako, we also have subsidiaries, uh, Molimu National Holding Limited, as well as uh, Equatorial Commercial uh, uh, Holding Limited. Uh, these are the subsidiaries that have uh, uh, owned the shares at, uh, uh, at Aspire Bank, and we want to thank each and every uh, board of directors who have participated in ensuring that uh, these transactions come to a complete. The chair of the bank has thanked the directors at Aspire Bank, Allow me to also thank uh, the Acting Managing Director, uh, Mr. Brian Kilonzo, uh, for the momentous task that uh, he has gone through. Uh, also with his team, the management team, uh, the, CF the CFO, uh, Mr. Frederick, uh, the legal manager, uh, Ken, and also the other team members. We want to thank you for what you have done uh, on this transaction. I want to also appreciate uh, the transaction advisors, NCBA. I want to appreciate, uh, together with Tambic, they also want to appreciate uh, the legal advisor, Mose, Mr. Ngugi, and your team. Uh, also, uh, a and L uh, advocates who have been able to advise us uh, properly as we proceed with this uh, unique transaction. There was a transition committee that was set up immediately. We signed the transaction in September. 
I want to thank each and every one of them, uh, led by our company secretary, uh, Mr. Madam Brenda, uh, as well as also our finance director at Molimu, uh, Felix uh, Saina. Uh, last but not least, uh, we want to thank the regulators uh, for working with us through this process, mostly uh, SASRA. Uh, they have been instrumental in guiding us in uh, this transaction and also approving this transaction, and we want to take this opportunity to thank them, even if they are in uh, absentia. So thank you very much, and I want to wish you a pleasant afternoon. Asanteni. Thank you, Chairman, uh, for those uh, very kind remarks. Um, I now want to invite kindly uh, the group managing director and CEO, Equity uh, Group, Dr. James Mwangi, uh, to say a few words. Karibu, James. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mary. And from the onset, uh, let me use the same protocol list you used uh, to recognize uh, those present, those we have worked with, and at the same time, uh, add my voice in expressing my gratitude for the support all the parties have prayed to make this uh, truly um, leechalogic uh, aid. Um, in a very special way, I want to recognize uh, uh, the chairman and their board and management of the two partner institutions, Marimusako and Spa Bank. Uh, we all heard from uh, Chairman William Rahedi what uh, they've gone through, Chairman of uh, Marimusako since 2014, the genesis, and uh, their decision. Uh, that uh, ultimately they would like to diversify and uh, they were looking for means and ways uh, for what he's, uh, he said, a systematic, dignified plan de uh, uh so that uh, they could move on uh, because of the challenges as uh, Morimu Sako chairman, Joel said. Um, and uh, we want to thank them because of citing us identifying us and approaching us uh, to seek uh, partnership. And uh, for us at Equity Group, the decision was not uh, difficult because you all know that uh, our beginnings, uh, like Mwali Musako, we were a building society which was built under the mutual fad, which is very similar to the Sako, and our beginnings our humble beginnings were in rural areas. And our success, particularly in rural Kenya, was because of the support of the teachers. So it is really the people who build the equity, eventually who were coming, asking us to extend a heart of support uh, to make this happen. We deepened uh, our relationship with teachers through many programs. I remember for 12 years we sponsored the drama festivals and through that uh, movement, grassroots uh, movement, we became very close with the teachers. And then uh, the big one was when we then asked the teachers uh, whether we could uh, uh, cause or, or promote the Wings to Fry program and they became board members of the selection teams. They formed chapters in every school uh, to support the Wings to Fry program. And together with the teachers and other partners, we now have 60,000. Um, I know some people are up to 48, but this year we have added another 12,000 kids, bringing the number to 60,000. As we speak, the teachers are taking care of 40,000 uh, wings to fry and remove scholars. So we have uh, 10,000. Uh, kids in Form 4, 10,000 kids in Form 3, 10,000 kids in Form 2, and the immediate class Form 1 will have 13,000 kids 
and you can imagine the burden of taking care of 42,000 kids at the same time. That is the board we have, we have had with the teachers. And when we cried out the need to support environment, and we asked the teachers, we understand uh, you cut down 12 million trees in a year to fuel the kitchens, to cook for our nearly uh, 14 million children uh, in secondary schools. Can we work together? I'm glad to say we have now replaced most of uh, the wood fuel kitchens with LPGs. So that is the background upon which we entered into this relationship. So when um, Sparbank and Morimu asked us, can we work together? We went back to how can it be done? As the chairman said, for four years, they had struggled to find a suta means and a way of uh, having um, a dignified crochet. And it was uh, uh, becoming increasingly difficult and uh, losses were eroding uh, the profits and constantly Mwarimu was being asked to continue to fad and essentially was weakening uh, uh, Mwarimu Sako. And we said, let's sit together. And I'm really glad that like, uh, our history of innovation, those who know uh, our con uh, conversion from a building society to a bank uh, required us to amend 14 crosses. Uh, in the Building Societies Act to allow a migration path. And then people could really remember our listing by introduction, the first one ever to happen in the African continent. And so we asked ourselves, can we be able to do this? And we remembered how we build Equitel, and uh, Marimu has gone through the same process. We had to overcome six uh, court cases uh, to be able to issue the equity uh, uh, SIM cards. So f borrowing from there, that is how we said, I think there is a way we could be able to structure this through ac uh, acquisition of some assets and liabilities. And broadly, the motivation then was about uh, um, customer protection. It was about the customer experience, the teachers. And uh, just to cut the long story short, it was their teachers, 20,320 with the deposit. As the chairman said, they are not able to access their deposits. Uh, can we take over those deposits and make those deposits available to the teachers? And then we said, how do we fund that? And we said, you have loans we can look at the loans that you have. And uh, if they are well structured, if they are well secured, we can take them over. So the deposits are funded by us taking notes. So when we take a, talk about uh, buying some as, uh, assets, is buying the entire deposit base, other than the deposits of Mwari Musako. Bring them to the bank, open account for each customer, and make the deposit available to them. So whoever had that deposit today, they were struggling to access that money. Today they can access their money in its entirety. And then uh, the only way then uh, for us uh, to fund this deposit was to take an equivalent amount of loans so that uh, then uh, the bank could continue uh, again supporting those borrowers to pay their loans in an orderly way without recording the loans. Uh, but the loans were less than uh, deposits, and that is where Marie Musako said, yeah, we could bridge by providing you uh, with cash equivalent to the difference between loans and deposits. So that is basically because I've seen quite a lot being said, uh, it's, not, it's not equity being paid, a spa bank matching deposits with uh, loans and cash assets and liabilities, so that it's more of a takeover. I'm glad, as Mary said, uh, that tran uh, transfer happened yesterday midnight, and today we have had customers access. There is no limitation. If, uh, 
50 customers have already accessed their money, so there is no limitation. If you had a, a million shillings and you want your million, it's available like any other equity customer. So the pain the customers would have been going through, the distress of not having their funds yet, it's a school fees term, that's it. When it comes to the borrowers, we took those roads. And like what we did for equity customers during COVID, we we'll do to those customers. If they want better arrangement, if they had a loan which was two years and they are feeling the pain of repayment, we we'll discuss, negotiate with them. We can prolong the period to make sure that none of these uh, uh, borrowers are able. What have we put? We have put the capability of the bank to solve a national issue a Kenyan issue, and that is where I'm very proud to belong to equity. Because wherever there is a national challenge, equity creatively provides a solution. And maybe for Kenyans, this is the power of homegrown uh, solutions and institutions. We did this through, during COVID. We said uh, we could devote uh, 1.4 billion shillings to, uh, to support our hospitals with PPEs. We restructured the loans for 45% of all our borrowers so that they could cope with the stress. And now here we are saying uh, the 3,700 borrowers, none of them should panic. We'll sit down with them, uh, make arrangements to what uh, period they are comfortable, the amount they are able to, so that we accommodate them. We are using the liquidity of the bank to meet the obligations of the borrowers and using our strength of capital to again uh, make arrangement for the borrowers to have an ordinary way of um, uh, paying their loans. I want to lead a, uh, a prod, uh, uh, the chairman and their boards and the management of the two institutions because again in Kenya we have created the first one. An ordinary way uh, of uh, exiting uh, in the banking sector without creating instability in the financial sector, without causing panic to the financial sector, without uh, uh, causing public panic, and without even a single depositor losing their money. It's no longer the deposit administration. We have brought another market mechanism where customers walk to the bank and they have their money. It's continuity of a banking relationship. And that is why, for me, uh, the big lesson is if we can do this for the customers, maybe, maybe, Chairman uh, Morimu uh, Sako, this will be a beginning of you achieving the dreams and aspiration Morimu Sako had for the teachers of this country to achieve banking services through partnership and collaboration. I believe there is nothing ahead of us that would have been difficult, like structuring this uh, relationship. As Mary said, I think we had uh, almost seven uh, advisors. Yes. Almost seven advisors. I think for a partnership and collaboration, uh, CEO, we don't need the seven advisors. We have learned a lot of lessons, and I see like uh, is going back loud the whole circle and equity positioning itself to be available to the teaching community, to the teacher um, community to support them to their dreams and aspirations. And I'm hoping uh, that uh, CEO MD will give us a chance uh, now to have a structured relationship, not of solving problems, but of creating solutions for the future and partnerships, not uh, supporting teachers when in distress, but uh, supporting teachers to make their dreams come true. I give you my commitment, I made it to the chairman, uh, that uh, if we could solve this, uh, then structuring. Um, uh, I understand there is something called uh, Banking as a service, maybe through that partnership, you can provide uh, all the teachers with the banking services through Mwari Musako without necessarily acquiring a license. Because that's what banking as a service means. It is, means the bank giving 
mandate uh, to another entity to provide banking service. So to me, that is the partnership so that you can have a bank without having a bank license. That is the ultimate position that uh, any institution. And I guess having seen what we have gone through for one year and uh, four months, I think we have learned a lot. We have built uh, boards, we have built strong relationship, and we commit to give you what um, it takes. Let me add uh, by saying once again uh, to the 20,320 depositors, your money is with the equity, is readily available to you, you can access it the way you want, river obligations. There are no restrictions, there are no limitations on withdrawal. The liquidity is available to you as you need it. To the 3,700 borrowers, uh, we want to say we are amicable to sitting with you and entering into new loan repayment structures that speaks to you and that enables you to be able to uh, the, uh, pay your loan and get back uh, your securities. Uh, so we we'll provide support uh, to the teaching community, to the teachers, and we we'll, uh, build, uh, we'll build uh, hopefully we'll get that uh, opportunity, particularly to start at this time with Mwari Musako. Mwari Musako, as the, the anchor shareholder, has borne the lead, the challenge, as the chairman said. Uh, the losses had to be borne by somebody, and uh, we would like to start with you, whether it's a long-term facilities to, to start in the gaps that might be there, uh, you can count on us to, uh, to, uh, to do that. I want to thank the regulators. Uh, the central bank, the SACO, the uh, anti-competition authority for their understanding. I want uh, to thank the teachers for their steadfast in supporting this. And um, uh, internally, uh, Chairman Abazeda, uh, we are humbled by your understanding uh, because uh, there was a lot of media coverage of this transaction, why it could never happen, and your board uh, stood with us as we explained and gave us all the approvals. It could never have happened if we didn't have an, a very uh, open um, a board that could be able to give us uh, that uh, uh, approvals as required, knowing that this is a national solution to uh, ke the Kenyan people. And uh, I'm glad that equity had the privilege uh, to respond to the needs of the Kenyan people and to use its uh, position in the marketplace to create what uh, the chairman, and I did it like uh, Chairman William, what you said, a orderly, dignified, systematic way of bringing closure to an issue. I, I feel very, very proud to associate with you. Most people, it's the, for the first time this has happened in Kenya. And no dare crush in the banking industry with honor, full honor, not just to the depositors, but to the staff. Staff in the past uh, have uh, uh, suffered a lot. Depositors have suffered. They are put under deposit protection fund. They wait for years, the first lot, they, they have, we have never completed compensation, and here is the deposit are transferred overnight, and the customers have their deposit. Borrowers are told, don't panic, renegotiate the terms you want in terms of repayment that suits you, so that you, your securities are secure in an orderly manner. Thank you for giving us that opportunity to be of service to the Kenyan people through the teaching community. Thank you very much. Thank you, our group CEO, Dr. Mwangi, for those uh, remarks. Now, there's a team I, I would like to mention specifically, John Wamai and your tech team. They, they are an amazing team, kindly. 
because uh, I was very worried about the, you know, the transition at midnight last night. I didn't sleep, but uh, you know, he had already mapped all the accounts coming and his system was ready. And he told me, don't worry, Mary, at midnight, can you assure Kilonzo that I'll just do an F10, they call it an F10, just press a button and all the accounts were on equity side from Mr. Kilonzo's side. So we want to appreciate your, you and your tech team uh, together with the digital operations team, uh, Godfrey, for that very seamless uh, transition uh, at midnight last night. We really appreciate that and the dedication to support the customers. Okay, so I think uh, we'll now take a pause from the remarks and now we'll give uh, an opportunity for questions and answers. Now, if you are watching or listening to us online, kindly you can ask your questions on those platforms. Our team will be on the lookout for any questions that are asked through the online uh, channels. So feel free to ask the question from wherever you are. We are going to see it, and the team here, led by Dr. Mwangi, the two chairmen, the CEOs present, we have uh, three CEOs, Equity, uh, Mwalimu, and Aspire Bank, and anyone else in the meeting, or the transaction advisors will be able to address your questions. So kindly, uh, could the mics uh, go around? Uh, uh, Alex, you support on that? Yeah, thank you. So, questions now. Um, Mr. Oro. Good afternoon. My name is Olo from Think Business. Now, um, let me first say that I like the way this has ended because it's not like some of the other situations like Spire that we've seen before in terms of the conclusion. Now, um, <clears throat> I think that, as they say, the devil is in the details. You have not come forward with quite a number of details. You said you basically netted off the deposit is to Dr. Mwangi and maybe the Spire team against the loans, yeah? Uh, and uh, then there was a top up by, was it Spire for the deficit? Is it possible to just give us a little more details about the money side of things? How much, for example, uh, were the deposits and how much were the loans in money terms? And then whatever other amount that was paid to equity to meet the deficit that there was. I think that's, that's uh, my first question, I want to also say that um, uh, in my many years of analyzing banks, um, as I mentioned, this was really handled very well. It took so long, maybe because of the politics and so on. But then looking back at where we've come from, how other banks in these situations have been handled before? Do you see this as a model that can work going forward for any other time when we have uh, situations where banks are having difficulties meeting their obligations. Thank, thank you, Cheng. Any other question? Yes. Um, um, Faisal. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Faisal Ahmed from Citizen. Um, I just wanted to find out uh, from Dr. Mwangi, what are now the plans with uh, the assets that you've acquired? And more specifically, what sort of assets have you acquired um, in these transactions from Spire Bank? Thank you, Faisal. Maybe for now we can take those gems. Uh, thank you very much, and I will ask to be assisted. Uh, so, hello, uh, you are spot on, on two aspects. Uh, remember, uh, the agreement was signed uh, in uh, September uh, 2021, 
and it was completed on the midnight of 31st. Uh, so they are moving numbers uh, because uh, how the loans were at that time, how the deposits were at that time has changed because we are taking the actual balances. Uh, and that is really uh, where. But at the moment, at the time of design uh, of these, uh, the 20,000 depositors who have grown now to 20,320, you can see uh, Spa Bank was still opening accounts and receiving deposits. At that time, it was uh, uh, 1.3 billion and 22 million. That, that was at the time of signing the agreement. That was um, at the uh, deposits uh, and the number of depositors. From the own side, we had the 3,700 with 945 million shillings. And that is uh, because the transaction was uh, take uh, the entire liability side and then look for loans that uh, we could be able to uh, take up to match the, the liability side because we were taking liabilities, we needed assets that we could. So when we looked at it, uh, we could get uh, loans of 945 against the deposits of 1.32 billion. And that was giving us a deficit of 377 billion. Um, now, that is the gap that required to we look for how to fund it uh, in terms of uh, uh, making the two sides to balance. Um, ideally, what it did is that, as we said, the customers never took any risk. Uh, the people who took risk, uh, and we discharged uh, Spa Bank and Mwarimu from future obligation was us, uh, such that we had dilute uh, the risk of their own portfolio. Uh, and that is uh, where I feel very, very proud that uh, uh, we could adalite and say, whatever we don't recover from uh, the 945 million will be our loss. And, and that is why you shouldn't see this transaction as the usual merger and acquisition. This was about uh, um, customer. A protection. It's about a customer protection. And we used the balance sheet of uh, the group to underwrite the risk of the customers. So, uh, and that's really uh, the gist of uh, it. If you could call it uh, a transaction uh, of empathy, it is um, whether you want to call it a social responsibility to the Kenyan people, you can call it that way. But it's not a commercial transaction, Pfizer in the traditional way. It was how do you ensure no depositor lose their money? And since uh, Spa Bank would not uh, be able to give us the cash equivalent to the deposits we were taking, then we took the existing loans and took the risk of default. And that is why upfront, to reduce that risk, we are saying we are willing to restructure the loans so that uh, clients can be able to beat them, so that we can reduce our risk. So that is the structuring law, and I hope the numbers are. But as I said, this was at a moment of signing. We'll exactly know what the actual numbers are uh, when we look at what happened at midnight. Uh, what was the loan book we took, and what was the deposit we took, because the customers were transacting. Um, and as you had this morning, uh, we got uh, checks uh, worth uh, nine uh, million shillings for deposits. So uh, th there's quite a lot that was happening. Uh, Pfizer, uh, what happens? Uh, as we said, uh, this was specified assets. We acquired specified assets. And we only acquired the assets of the, cust the customers had with the, uh, with the spa bank. We didn't acquire anything outside this asset. Banks do intermediation. They take deposits and give them to uh, those who have excess. Uh, they give deposits or to have deficit borrow. So what we did was to take the two sides. We took the deposit and said who had borrowed this deposit. We took those as loans 
And uh, so the only two sides of equity bank that were affected is our deposits went up and our loan book uh, went up last night. And that's how the transaction is designed. So it is a deposit, it's a customer uh, transaction. It's not uh, at the entity level. It's at the customer level, it's at the market level, and that's why I said we were responding to the needs of the Kenyan people. We were providing a solution to the Kenyan people. I like the second question. Is this, um, uh, have we established an ordinary way, whatever there is challenge, whatever there is need for consolidation? I think we have brought a very unique way uh, of consolidation in the Kenyan uh, market, where, uh, uh, like uh, the chairman said, what we, uh, SPA Bank is a consolidation of three banks uh, prior to these transactions. Uh, that is that one way of doing it. And here it is a um, consolidation at the customer level, as opposed to uh, at the institutional level. And that is why it was spe specific assets that were being acquired. These specific assets are only assets owned by customers, either as a deposit or as a, or as a loan. And broadly, we were trying to match the assets and the liabilities so that uh, we offset the obligations to the customers, to the obligations the customers have to us. We are matching obligation to customers and customer obligation to us. And then taking the risk because the li liquid one, uh, the customers can take their deposit today, the loans will wait for them to be paid and there could be default, but uh, we are in the banking business of taking risks. So we took this risk as customer acquisition risks. I hope I've been able to explain. Thank you very much, Hello, Faisal, I hope uh, you, you, thank you very much. Thank you, James. Any other? Yes. Um, so any... maybe I could have added, there is, there is always this head right. Equity is being paid to acquire Sparbank. There is nothing like that. Uh, nothing could be far from the truth. There is nothing. We just acquired assets that customers had and assets that customers owed Spa Bank. And uh, they said, if uh, you got these deposits, you are giving us these loans. If there is a difference, how do you create that difference? And a difference will always be, we have ventilated lent all the money. This amount had not been lent because deposits were 1.3, uh, loans were 945, so 377 had of depositors' money had not been lent. So you give us that so that we can give back the deposit and we take the risk of the loan. So there is n equity was not being paid. We were getting equivalent amount of deposit and loans. Although I hope that, and that is why it's a very innovative way, a unique way that could. We have walked this journey with the regulators. And so the regulators have understood there is a new way of doing things. And I still remember that meeting we went to uh, after we had met uh, with Power Bank and Mwarimu, we were bold to go to the central bank and propose a new way of doing it. And I said, okay, let us think through. And then eventually, after dialogue, uh, led by Mary, they understood. It took us a bit of time also to carry our advisors with us. But eventually, we now have experts in the market who could be able to use this as a way of resolving and, and uh, doing consolidation in the banking industry instead of closing banks. It's a solution to closure. And it's decent, as Chairman said, and dignified. And planned. There's no ad hoc things. It's planned. You can see uh, everything is planned and sy uh, systematic. Thank you, James. Um, kindly go ahead. Uh, your name and your media host. Right. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is uh, Anu Lechieng from Mwango Capital, and uh, congratulations to the teams from Walimusako, Equity, and Spa Bank for the seamless transaction. So, my first question is, uh, what are the niggling pain points uh, you have had?
through the acquisition, especially those that could be eliminated by maybe regulatory changes or something. My second question goes to Mwali Musako. What are, uh, what are Mwali Musako's lessons from, the, from this ending to a bank that they had acquired? And my last question to Mr. Mwangi, uh, he made uh, recent remarks about tripling the company's uh, the, the equities balance sheet to about $25 billion, and he's been very intentional uh, in doing this. So uh, are there any more acquisitions that Equity Bank wants to do soon in Kenya or outside Kenya? Thank you. Very okay. good. Advisors, uh, you have been called upon. From this journey, are there pain points that would require regulatory change uh, that uh, would then make the next transaction smooth? Are there challenges you encountered that uh, you would like to share? So, Mary, do you want to facilitate that conversation between the regulators? And give, you can give okay. each of them a chance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think uh, we are happy the advisors are here. Probably the transaction advisors were the ones who had to crack uh, the structure initially. Uh, so, Kathule and uh, Deepa, probably if you have any thoughts on that uh, question. <laughs> yeah, I think Deepa is, uh, oh, she's there. Kathule is the other end. We are now throwing you under the bus. <laughs> I think that um, regulatory change continues to happen. And we're actually quite fortunate that in a country like Kenya, our regulators are quite well advanced. So in terms of support for transactions like this, um, we did get you know, speed in terms of execution, whether it was the competitions authority or whether it was the Central Bank of Kenya, in terms of the advice they uh, took on board, the um, points that mattered to them, they were able to sound them out. So I think that we are quite lucky in our country that we have a good regulatory framework. Thanks. Uh, Kathure, anything to add or any other opinion on that? No, not really. Um, I think it was a well-executed transaction. It was very innovative. And certainly the regulators um, and everybody in the room understood uh, what the core of the transaction was. Um, and other than the litigation that set us back a little bit, I think it was a very well executed transaction. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mose, the legal advisor, Mose and Mose, Simon. And then we'll go, go to Anjawala and Kana, Rosa and Kevin. I think what Deepa said is that uh, I think the regulatory aspect of it is robust. Perhaps maybe what I, I look forward to is in terms of the central bank and the other regulators, if these challenges can be picked much earlier so that we don't have so much erosion of these institutions uh, to the beat that uh, people feel a pinch or pain. Um, it's a unique transaction, and I think even for the, my colleagues, even from the legal team the other side, it's something sometimes you, when you are doing something that is unique, that has not been done before, you feel, uh, sometimes you are not sure about something, and you have, you know, you, you are overprotective about your client and all those manner of things. But otherwise, it went well, and I'm happy that we have closed this. Thank you so much. Thank you, Simon. Uh, Rosa, you can say something about that. Thank you, and um, good afternoon, everyone. I think there are a number of things that can be looked at um, more critically to facilitate a transaction like this. One is, of course, the aspect of time. We started this conversation in December of 2021. We went through the whole of 2022. We are now in February, and that's because of the many actors in between. Um, and, of course, as that is happening, there is erosion of wealth. 
Um, and so from a timing perspective, there needs to be a, a, ch a challenge in terms of getting all the regulators together. We needed to go to the competition authority. Um, they called us for a number of meetings to get them to understand the transaction. So we didn't have alignment on that, on that basis. Um, the good thing is all of them were quite um, receptive and with time we got everyone um, across the board. The second thing is of course the issues around the regulatory um, requirements around a voluntary liquidation. And that for us was a big challenge as the person acquiring the, the assets and the liabilities. So from the perspective of the deposit protection, who the liquidator should be, and at what point does that liquidation actually kick, uh, kick into place? Because as you know, if you buy the, the um, assets for an entity that is not um, solvent, there may be challenges that arise out of the back end of that. So that was something we had to grapple with in terms of how do we then structure the transaction to ensure that we are not um, stepping on any of the uh, insolvency um, issues. And we were grateful because the, the Mwali Musako and the Spire Bank team worked with us closely to ensure that there were no resolutions that had been made or anything like that that could then um, have triggered a process that could not have allowed this um, to happen. The last thing is, of course, on the employment um, challenge. As you know, we had this matter tied up in court for a couple of months and we needed consent. I think there is um, a scope for ensuring that there is regulation that supports what happens to employees in such a situation where we don't have to erode capital because we are trying to solve the problem for the employees. It should be very clear what the solution for the employees are and the courts should know that solution is quite straightforward. And so the courts shouldn't say, keep coming back next week to explain to us, go away and enter into a consent. If the process is very clear, then that issue of um, spending almost, I think we had about five or six months where we had the challenge of the, of the court case. So that's also another issue that can help because the, 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 the success of this is in the speediness of the response. Thank you. Thank you so much. Any other person who wants to volunteer uh, an opinion? Uh, Kevin, I'm sure you're okay. Okay. So let me say that um, from a legal statutory perspective, the law is very clear because we went under Section 9 of the Banking Act, uh, which provides for transfer of assets and liabilities from one institution to another because now the transfer had to be from Spire Bank to Equity Bank. Now, remember, that is the same section that Equity used when we were transferring the assets and liabilities of the building society that we owned earlier to the bank itself when we formed Equity Bank, but that, that was way back in 2004. The only difference being that that was an internal, equity internal transaction. Now this one has involved two different parties. So in terms of regulation, I would say that the process is crystal clear. There's no ambiguity about it. I think the ambiguity comes when it comes to how do you manage the interest of the various stakeholders involved, as Rosa has explained, and how do you find that balance? So that, that is where, which is more, I would say, a logistic call challenge, managing the stakeholders. But I must say that um, the institutions involved managed the process very well. And there was a lot of um, information that went out. We, we got um, updated. The shareholders of Mualimu, um, under the chairmanship of Joel and his team, they gave out the information, they explained, because a lot of the times, a lot of the challenges come because we don't have information on the ground with the stakeholders. And once they understood the objective, it was very easy for them to get the, 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 the resolutions that they wanted, not only from their board, but also from their shareholders. And you know there are many shareholders, and that's where some of the complications would arise. So a lot of it is also managing the relationships and the stakeholder management uh, uh, strategy that each institution uh, employed in terms of 
carrying everybody along. So that I think that's the comment I would like to add. Thank you. So a law, then you can see this thing is a new way it can be. I think, let me say it would never have happened if we didn't have visionary charismatic leaders at Mwari Musako. That is, they are the ones who opened up this. They made a voluntary decision uh, on their own that they wanted uh, to pull out of banking, that uh, they wanted to remain as Mwari Musako uh, and hence the need for a voluntary liquidation. I think once again, that is the first, if maybe I'm not mistaken, in the banking industry. That decision itself, uh, it's, there is a lot to learn. That uh, failure to make a decision is a decision it's, uh, itself. But here they chose to make the decision to reduce the pain uh, and the community. Uh, Ocheng, the second of, uh, part of the question, um, you notice that uh, there are two obligations to us. We are now the largest uh, financial institution in Eastern Central Africa, uh, almost 1.5 trillion shillings of assets. As a leader, uh, as uh, a, an iconic uh, Kenyan organization, we have an obligation to provide leadership. This transaction uh, is unlike any other. It was intended to bring stability in the banking industry to bring an orderly way of consolidating and particularly a, a way that uh, gives zero pain to the customers so that they don't lose anything. And that is the part that we are very proud of. However, there are two ways of growing organically, and equity has done that uh, very well. And uh, there is also acquisition and mergers, which we have done uh, very well in DLC. Uh, we have acquired two banks and uh, maintained. So those two remain strategic options, but they only are organic is an everyday growth, uh, but the other one is when an opportunity arises. Uh, so we are always open to them uh, because we have come to appreciate the power of scale uh, uh, and uh, in some markets, that's the best way of growing. At the moment, we have nothing going, but uh, if th something comes, remember it's an option uh, of our strategic growth pursuits. Thank you. Okay, Rinda. Um, the mic there. I think Master of Solomon. Hello, my yeah. name is Linda Koske from K24 TV. Speaking of growth, especially organically, <laughs> I'm just curious how much is equity looking at? Once this really picks up, how much is equity looking at, especially whether in this financial year or the next? Uh, the chairman here had a question, but let me try and answer that. I, I think, um, as you said, uh, there are two things we have learned. That uh, the market is always watching. And the market rewards uh, uh, kind act, acts. We saw between 2000, January 2000 and December 2002, because of our compassion uh, to our uh, customers, the shared dealing uh, loans of 45%, giving 1.4 billion Kenya shillings uh, to COVID, the market acted with a lot of love. And as I said, from a balance sheet of 600 billion, we are now uh, around 1.5 trillion. So we have doubled during COVID. I hope that the teachers will act in the same way, that we avoided them having pain, um, and that they will consolidate their banking with equity. That's my prayer. But I see a tangible vehicle or uh, out of the commitment. Remember, I said we made a commitment that we shall support, um, rebuild, and strengthen Mwari Musako because of what it has gone through. And we have said we will start by them. And we have said we will give them the capability to do what they wanted to do to the teachers, over banking as a service, as opposed to having a license. And you could imagine 
the nearly 500,000 teachers with the additional 30,000 who are being employed uh, uh, this week. Uh, if they all chose equity to be their bank, then even three trillion will be a small number, Linda. So those are the opportunities. And uh, we'll do everything, Chairman, uh, to woo the teachers, to support the teachers, so that the ideals, the vision, and the dream they, they had will be realized through the partnership and collaboration. Uh, and that's, the, uh, that's where we see the opportunity of growth, both the own book and uh, the deposit, and even transactions and payments. As um, we had said earlier, equity has nearly 400 uh, uh, branches. We have uh, 700,000 pay with equity merchants. Most likely those are uh, teacher, uh, the teachers running uh, the businesses who own. So we can see a huge opportunity if we are deliberate and intentional uh, to strengthen the relationship and particularly to empower the teachers uh, to provide leadership both in business in this country. They are very well positioned uh, to do and then that will uh, uh, provide us a huge opportunity and provide Mwarimu with an opportunity uh, to achieve the ambition it had uh, of providing banking services to the teachers. Thank you, James. Chairman? Uh, thank you. Uh, there was a question by Arnold concerning uh, what are the lessons uh, for Molimu uh, from uh, this diversification or the investment uh, in the banking sector. Uh, before I answer the question, I have uh, two or three points concerning that. I want to dispel uh, uh, any uh, rumor that uh, has been shared in the local media that uh, uh, our investment in 2014, uh, that uh, no proper due diligence was conducted. I want to state that uh, during that time, we did engage uh, some of the best transaction advisors and also the legal advisors. Uh, they advised the institution on uh, this transaction. And uh, if you can look at even the records, the performance of the institution for two years, uh, that is 2015 and 2016, the institution was uh, profitable. However, uh, the environment in business uh, do change, and uh, this is what has really affected us. Uh, what I can be able to say is that uh, uh, we did not uh, calculate uh, properly uh, what we are getting into, uh, mostly looking at the future prospects of uh, the industry, uh, purposely on uh, liquidity, uh, because uh, immediately uh, we acquired uh, Equatorial Commercial Bank. Uh, all of you are aware that is a time uh, the regulator uh, brought in issues of capping interest rates. Uh, through uh, this capping of interest rates, you found uh, the interest income uh, from the loans that we had in the institution really went down, and also the issue of provisioning. Uh, this is what has affected the institution. Also, uh, we probably did not uh, scan the environment uh, to get to know the intelligence of our big brother. Uh, just looking at uh, what was happening uh, in the banking industry, almost all commercial banks were making profit. Uh, I think we could have uh, done uh, better to scan the environment, but I want to state that uh, the regulatory environment, the, uh, the legal uh, framework uh, changed at that time, and that is what uh, that has affected the institution. Uh, so uh, even another issue that uh, occurred that time you remember the teachers, uh, they came up, uh, the teachers, uh, the employer, TSC, uh, and, uh, for, uh, and the union came up with a collective bargaining agreement whereby uh, salaries were increased tremendously for uh, around four years. And this had a strain into our institution because majority of our members are teachers. They did uh, have a huge demand of loans at our institution. So this really affected us uh, to support uh, our subsidiary Spire Bank. 
I think uh, another issue uh, before I give to, my, uh, to the CEO to also uh, give his observation is uh, that moving forward, uh, it will be wise. Uh, instead of going it alone, you can be able to form partnership, uh, have collaboration with our engagement currently with equity uh, through Dr. Mwangi. He has said that uh, you can be able to realize uh, your goal of uh, good returns, uh, not necessarily by having a license, but also having partnership whereby you can be able to uh, do the business as a service uh, with the other commercial banks. And we are looking forward to ensure that this is what uh, we are going to do in future. Thank you. I know my CEO might have something. Thank you, uh, Chair. I think mine is very brief in terms of the lessons learned. At Malimu National, we don't lament about decisions that we make. We make those decisions and live by them. And that's why we are here. And uh, we are very keen to complete this transaction. And we'll do it. So that is what we do at Malibu National. The second point I want to mention is that uh, we have learned not to kick the can down the road. When things doesn't work, we have to really look at what else can we do so that uh, we safeguard the our members' interest, and that is what we did. So instead of waiting for another two years for the losses that accumulate to wipe out the bank capital, we said no, we cannot move in that direction. And that's why we're here. So the last point I also want to make, which probably is just out of uh, the recent uh, media reporting, I didn't know that uh, when some of these issues are being reported in the media. My picture features so much. Mwalimu Teachers Bank, irrespective of uh, the bank being a limited liability company and Mwalimu National also being a limited liability company. Uh, my colleague at the bank, Brian, you have been very, very lucky that uh, your photo doesn't appear besides your institution. But we take it with a stride and it doesn't really, I mean, scare us. As much as you want to put more pictures, we will uh, take it with a stride. But we have to do what is right, and that is what we are doing. So that is the only comment I would make at this particular moment in time. Thank you. Um, thank you for the questions. I think we'll now move to the next phase, which is um, will be supported by Lydia Delango uh, in terms of signing the the completion of this transaction. Lydia, please. And if my colleagues can support me in on the high table, thank you. We we'll request the transaction advisors to, to kindly support the respective teams they were supporting by standing be, behind them, kindly. The respective transaction advisors If we can probably try and bring the seats uh, closer together, um, kindly, if we try and bring the seats uh, closer together. We can probably go through the, <laughs> the process again for, for purposes of uh, the media team. And
Thank you. If we could kindly now have uh, MD Kenya Gerard exchange the documents with the chair, um, Spire Bank. As the, as the others are witnessing, um, And then they can be joined by the chair, Mwarimu, together with Dr. Mwangi. Yes, thank you. Um, then let's, let's take a group photo and we look like uh, <laughs> this is a good moment, like uh, the chairman was telling us uh, from Spire Bank. And congratulations for seeing the transaction come to an end. Thank you. Thank you. Then we'll have uh, Dr. Mwangi together with the chairman, Mori Musako, exchange the documents. And if you allow, maybe we can have a group photo together with the transaction advisors now as, as we lap up. Please. Lydia. Thank you, and smile. <laughs> Thank you, and probably I can invite the board members to join uh, for, a, for, for a group photo with the chair, Mwarimu, the chair, Aspire, and Dr. Mwangi and MD Kenya. Kindly, Sam. Thank you. Let's, let's kindly do the photo. Um, Andrew, you can, you can kindly move this way. This way, please.
My name is John Tindi. I'm uh, in agribusiness. I own an agrovet and I also do rice production and horticulture production as a way of living. In horticulture I do pepper, I do eggplants, I do vegetables, both uh, African and uh, exotic. I also have a tractor. I do plowing for myself and to other people as well as also an alternative source of income. My tractor does uh, plowing, rotavating, it also does uh, trailing, it uh, pulls a trailer that carries a mizigo, it also pulls a water bowser that is used to uh, supply construction sites and various uh, events. I started in uh, 2016 with my uh, kitchen garden and then uh, I grew to one acre and then I started doing three acres of rice uh, to supplement the horticulture. Now I'm um, at over 10 acres of rice and over three acres of horticulture. I also have a small orchard. It has uh, bananas, it has sour soap, it has popo, it has uh, citrus fruits, it has lemon, it has uh, oranges. There are so many challenges we face, especially as youths in agribusiness. The key among them being financing. It's not easy to get a lender who can support your dreams as a youth in agribusiness. That hinders our growth because we can't access uh, sufficient financing to finance our ventures. We also have a challenge uh, during the COVID times. We find that it affected our business so much. There was little liquidity in the market, so we had stock, but it couldn't translate to cash. Put that in a very bad situation. Every market has competition, and especially the market that I'm in uh, was the latest entrant. I found it very difficult at the beginning to, to succeed where the big boys had already entered. But uh, over the years I've managed to know how to do it, and now things are going well. When I was venturing, uh, I found a lot of youth who had nothing to do. They were basically jobless and uh, were just loitering around. So I took them and uh, we started uh, having small farms for each of them. And right now they are also growing as I grow. They have farms as well that they are using uh, to get a source of income. Equity has been a very important partner because initially when I was looking for financing to grow, I visited various uh, financial institutions but uh, they could not offer me exactly what I wanted. So when I went to Equity and I talked to them, then I realized they could be able to support me through the journey. And uh, the first loan I took with Equity was of 100,000 shillings and uh, I paid it back after six months. Then I went for another loan of 400,000 shillings and I also paid it back after one year. The recently I took an asset financing loan of 1.9 million with equity and I've done eight months. So far things are going on well. Equity Group Foundation took me through financial literacy training. So initially I was just doing business without keeping records. And so I could not know my exact position as a businessman, if I'm making profit or not. So after that training, I started keeping my records and I started uh, interacting with customers at a personal level. It has improved how I sell and it has made me realize uh, that indeed my venture is profitable. But that training has helped me to know uh, my key strengths where I can be able to sell and I capitalize on them when the business is not doing very well. That has uh, made me rise above my competitors because I know where my strength lies and so I put more effort on where my strengths are. Initially, I had uh, only one employee. I employed directly and uh, three others employed indirectly. But now I have five employees directly and uh, over 10 of them indirectly. I can tell uh, my fellow youths that agriculture is a full-time employment just like other sources of employment. 
And the goodness with the agribusiness is that uh, there's not so much pressure as in other sources of employment. You can be your own boss, you can employ as many people as you want and you can grow in as much as you make efforts to grow. Everybody can do agriculture even if you didn't study it. It is an area that welcomes everybody so long as you have the willingness to do it. There is always something you can do to change the situation in the country. My word of encouragement to the youth who are looking for employment is that don't look for employment. Employment is just next to you. You can start by growing uh, vegetables like I started with a kitchen garden and you grow gradually because the market for uh, food is everywhere. It starts with you. Every day you are able to have three meals a day and that means you pay money to eat. So there is uh, vast opportunities in the agricultural sector. Please venture into agriculture because uh, it can change uh, the economy and it can change how we do things.